How do you view him after this loss? I view him as the modern day version of Pete Carroll. Allow me to explain. <coughs> Pete Carroll is a highly respected coach. Mm -hmm. The difference between him and Shanahan is that he's a champion. But I want everybody to understand where I'm going with this. And this is something you need to know because I've reported this on several occasions. I don't give a damn how much the Legion of Boom and everybody associated with them denied this. One day a book will come out and they will admit what I know because I'm not saying it. I was told it and I totally believe it. When Pete Carroll elected to have Russell Wilson throw that football instead of giving it to Marshawn Lynch at the half-yard line, after Marshawn Lynch had rushed for four and a half yards on a previous play and was just playing lights out in that second half against the New England Patriots in that Super Bowl, it deflated the Seahawks in such a fashion that they were never the same. Because they knew the opportunity was there. You got no business blowing it. And something other than just playing pure football compromised your mode of thinking. When I saw those guys last night on those sidelines <coughs> for the San Francisco 49ers, that's what I saw. I saw them looking at a coach. You know how you got the coach that never played? You know what I'm saying? But they, he's, he's, he's brilliant, and you respect him when you win him. But when you lose him, particularly when you go away from what works, now suddenly the brothers step up on you and they feel different. If you remember, you know one of the key moments in yesterday's game? Real quick, y'all. <clears throat> For Kansas City, it was when Tyron Matthew was on the sideline going off. Called them words that can't be repeated over FCC airwaves and like, what we doing? And from that moment... Kansas City went out and stopped, made San Francisco pump for the first time and stopped them on those two possessions. He questioned their manner because at some point in time, it ain't about the coaching. It ain't about the plays they call or whatever. It's about us. And yesterday, Kyle Shanahan, you could see it in the eyes of numerous players. They were like, you got to be kidding me. What we doing here? How we go away from what we do? They didn't beat us with us being us. We had to listen and defer to this dude who ain't never been on the field. We had to defer to him and what he got us doing. And this dude is coaching scared and went away from everything that we are. Kyle Shanahan has had an excellent year, and he's proven to be pretty much a damn brilliant coach offensive mind. But I don't give a damn how brilliant you are. The championship, the fourth quarter of a championship, in two occasions, you have been outscored 40 to nothing, not including the six points in overtime, 40 <laughs> to nothing with seven possessions and not one single point. We, no question. We, you, you That's and I, how Kyle Shanahan philosophically, is we have some overlap here, but I disagree with you about something important. Sure. Molly's been saying it all day, scared money. Don't make no money. Scared money don't make money. I'm not worried about his performance in the second half to the extent you two are. I like the fact that he knew doing what he was doing, he could be, he could be you know, second-guessed the next day if it doesn't work. I like coaches who aren't worried about the negative outcome. Andy Reid went for it on fourth down. You know, time was if you did that, oh, see, that's why you kicked the field goal. He's not worried about that. Scared money don't make money. I'm not worried about what they did in the second half. If Garoppolo hits um, uh, uh, Sanders on that pass, he got behind the defense, they win. It's an amazing play call, amazing by Jimmy G. They win the Super Bowl. He just missed. He missed with Kittle. Well, he should have known that. Now you got to have faith in your quarterback. That's not what gets me. But I'm talking about in the first half. You know, don't use your timeout. Settle for the field goal. Those kind of things. Because don't forget, in the first go-round, as the offensive coordinator for the Falcons, you know, <laughs> he's also second-guessed left and right. That's the bottom line. So he gets scared of the negative outcome because he knows what's coming and as a result doesn't give his team the best chance to win. For that, he deserves blame. On the other hand, there's his team in the Super Bowl. There's his team in a one, you know, with a lead in the Super Bowl. So you got to give him some credit, too. In the end, they didn't win it because his team didn't perform. He does deserve criticism, not as much as you're giving him. He should be viewed as a really good offensive mind that can't win the big game. Same conversation we was having about Andy Reid before this game. 
if y'all remember, we talked about Andy Reid not winning the big ones, mismanaging clocks. Was he a Hall of Famer or not? Did he need this Super Bowl to solidify himself as one of the greatest coaches of all time? Because what we judge you on is, look, when you get to championships, yeah. everything before that becomes null and void mm -hmm. when you have a chance to win it. We got, we, we in, in, when we talk about sports, there, there are two seasons for a reason. And we are going to remember you by what you do when the chips are on the line. Yeah, it'll be great for somebody to say, you know what, guess what? Bill Belichick could still be a great coach, but without six Super Bowls, we wouldn't say he was the greatest coach ever. We wouldn't. They, they have guys with great winning percentages and all of that. But Bill Marty Belichick, Schottenheimer. Absolutely. Bill Belichick is known as the greatest because he's won six of the nine he's been to. MJ, known as the greatest because he won six of six. All of these things. So we are judging Kyle Shanahan based on where Kyle Shanahan ended up. And where he ended up was two times in the Super Bowl being a fearful head coach to put your foot on somebody's neck and go win the game. That's well, That is what he ended and, up and, as. And here's what I'm saying. It's more indictable in a sport like football. If it's baseball, it's tolerable, the analytics portion of it all, the numbers game, et cetera. Basketball to a lesser degree or what have you. But when you come to a game as physical as football, Max is almost, again, again, I, I usually leave the boxing analogies to you, but I will tell you, it's like a trainer that knows you got our nuclear right hand. It's like Deontay Wilder's trainer telling him, you know what, just jab and stay away. Really? What? Is it what? What? That's what Kyle Shanahan did. And I'm like, when you come, when, uh, again, I ask everybody, go to the cameras. But is he coaching Watch, scared I, in the I, second I, half if he's throwing I, the ball? I, you I, want I, him to run. I'm saying, I'm talking, I'm talking, I want him to run the football. I want him to run the football because you went away from your strength. And, and not but only that's that, not coaching and scared. Not that, scared, you yeah. wanted, you wanted, you went away from what your boys wanted to do. You said what they know works. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.